What is going on, everybody? Hello. It is Pixel Partners here, and welcome back to. Oh, hey. Oh, Hiya. hi. You're here. They... Yeah, they lay out of the cage. They let you out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, when we left off, uh, we well, we've gotten some a little bit of headway in our trial. We have Leighton also hanging out here, pointing at the back of Maya's head. Oh my god, he is. Hopefully, you don't think that's him accusing her. <laughs> you kind of pointed him that way, but uh, we are accusing Jean Grayer, the butler. Of being a witch. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a lot to unpack with that one, but let's focus uh, on what's coming up ahead, and that is freeing Maya. So, it's got to be that, um, young butler? I know what you're thinking. I couldn't quite believe it at first either. But, the evidence and circumstances all point to the butler. He, or she, has to be the witch. At least... It'll be a server the magic gem turns out to be fake. But if that's the case, then Baldup's murder was also... Yeah, it would be Grey Earl. No, it can't be true. He wouldn't have done that. Espella? I know, Jean. He held Sir Balduk in the greatest of respect. Jean didn't kill him. I'm sure of it. What if he was written to kill him by yeah. a storyteller? <laughs> Jean Grey, are you really what people think you are? There are still so many unknown factors in this trial. Ah! Oh, hi. Hey, you gonna come back to our side? It's Luke! I... It's okay to be wrong, buddy. I'm sorry, Maya. What I did is unforgivable. What are you saying, Luke? All you did was testify about what you saw. But, but, I should have trusted you. Well, yeah, but <laughs> you trust us now, right? And ironically, you did help us get to this answer. Mm-hmm. But thanks there, buddy. Maya. Anyway, Luke, it's thanks to you that we discovered new information. Thanks to me? Sure, you got Cracker to testify. That was a great idea. Wish I could talk to animals. Don't you too, Espella? Oh yes, I'd love to have a chat with Eve. It's not like you know speak with animals or anything because you're a <laughs> witch. You know what? <laughs> so Luke, will you teach us how to do it? Pretty please? Um, yeah, of course. I can try. Can you teach that? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> That's why I said I could try. <laughs> I'm just being just like, can you teach that? <laughs> Yay! That's a promise, right? Sure. <laughs> um, Mr. Wright? Huh? What is it, Luke? Do you mind if I join you from now on? Hell yeah! Not at all, Luke. It's not like you have anyone to go back to in the first place anyways, so <gasps> I'm used to this kind of thing. Maya lost their 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 guardian and came to me. Espella just kind of came here. Not at all, Luke. <laughs> I realized during the trial that in this strange town, even what you see with your own eyes may not be real. It's really, really messed up. Okay. That's why I'm not giving up yet. Professor, I know he'll return. We can't give up hope. You know, that's what I've been thinking too. Really? I have a feeling he'll reappear again when we get into trouble and help us out. Because, I mean, it's the professor we're talking about here. Right. And remember what he always says. Look forward to the future. Always look on the bright side. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it was the professor who said that. <laughs> Defender, cues. The admission's over. Turn to the go room. Gasp. Another gasp. Another gasp. <laughs> All right, Gaspies, let's go. It's time to bring <laughs> this trial to a close. <laughs> oh, I have something for you, Mr. Wright. Is it evidence? Yeah, please take it. Maybe it'll come in handy in the trial. It's evidence? A letter, huh? Let's see who it's from. Wait, Newton Bell Duke? There are several sheets of parchment inside, but they're all blank. The professor and I got this and we went to see the storyteller. That's right. Thank you, Luke. The more fun we have, the better. From the owl, remember? Yeah. You're welcome. Hmm. Okay. 
that'll be the final piece of it's evidence. It's obviously we need. written in like some kind of invisible ink or something. Yeah. Got no proof that it was Je Jean Grey Earl who turned the professor into gold. Even if the magic gem is a fake, it's still not decisive evidence. I don't know what will happen next, but I do know this battle's far from over. Jean was straight up in the gallery, too. Yeah. Hop down like everyone else. Yeah. Oh, we have to add to put you back up there. Sorry, my. No. <laughs> Dang you enjoyed it. your freedom while it lasted. <laughs> so now resume the trial of my fate. First things first, the occult crime analysts have finished examining the evidence. They have tested two magic gems from the witch's scepter. <laughs> Gold ore floated on the surface of the water, whereas Amalia sank. It was said that genuine magic gems float in pure water, wasn't it? Thus it has been established. At the familiar magic gem is a fake. Oh goddamn, he was right. I'm telling you, it's the amethyst, <laughs> am amethyst that Jean wears around. Yeah. The necklace. Oh, that oh, that oh, that oh, that This idea does not prove that go 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 door. Because we have gold door and go door. Yeah. <laughs> was used, of course. Goldor, Godor, Hodor, what's of, next? It's because of the, the color. <laughs> that <myth>. too. <laughs> Nonetheless, the defense's theory has now seemed more plausible. The court considers it worth looking into. You have no objections to that, do you, Inquisitor Barnum? I hate this whole fucking thing, but <laughs> no, my lord. Okay. Oh, what's that first part? <laughs> Nothing, my lord. <laughs> now then, bring in the witness. Hey there. Hi. When I state your name and profession. My name is Jean Grail. I serve the late Master Belduke. Since his death, I have been tending to his dwelling and putting his research materials in order. Yep. Hmm. I don't know what it is, but... I feel like there's something a bit different about Grey Earl today. And I've noticed what it is already. But yes, there is something we need to clarify, first of all. As you are no doubt aware, you have been accused of being a witch. Therefore, does Violet you tell us? Are you a boy or a girl? Are you a boy or a girl? Like those <laughs> fucking mobile ads. <laughs> I was thinking Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> Please hold on. Why? What is it? Excuse my rudeness, my lord, but at this time... I don't intend to answer that question. Huh? Why do you refuse to answer, witness? I've been following this trial from the gallery, and so I'm fully aware of the utterly absurd accusations made against me. Alchemy, the art pursued by Master Belduc, is concerned with the rules and logic that govern nature. As someone who had been helping Master Belduc for quite some time, I just see your theory is both illogical and impossible. Object you're illogical. But <laughs> anyway, the witch's scepter was thrown into the crime scene through a portal created by the magic spell Godor. That portal could not have been opened, could only have been opened from your room. And what's more, one of the walls in your room is painted green. And? <laughs> I believe anyone is free to paint their walls in whichever color they please. Besides, your theory relies on one magic gem being a fake. Well, that may have been proven true, another question has arisen. Where's the real one? Where could the genuine magic gem be? Ah, oh, it. I don't know. It must have been swapped with the fake one and discarded somewhere. I'm afraid that's impossible. Why? We assume, as you have claimed, that the witch used the spell Godor. That mean the magic gem must have been swapped after creating the portal. So tell me, when and where would the witch have disposed of the magic gem? I see your point. Several people paid witness to the incident, and the Knights of the Inquisition arrived at the scene immediately after. During that time, no one left the building, and the whole place was meticulously searched. I'm guessing Jean's not wearing the amethyst anymore. <laughs> that's that's the difference yeah. that Phoenix is pointing out. That that gem is not around his neck. He's like, there's something different. And I was like, yeah, I know what. Yeah. 
Naturally, my room was searched as well, although there was not much to see as I have few personal belongings. Where'd he put it? I'm trying to think of... Um, uh... Hmm. Not sure. Despite our inspection, nothing resembling a magic gem was found. I assure you, we have not overlooked anything. I would swear to it on my honor as a knight. He ate it like Phoenix ate the locket forever <laughs> ago. What? Stop with that. <laughs> so, Mr. Wright, I wish you accused me of being a witch. Should you not first prove that there's a connection between me and this missing magic gem? Furthermore, I would appreciate it if you could please approach me in the matter of a rational way like an alchemist. Well, actually, it wasn't really a locket. It was just a necklace. It was a pendant. That's what yeah. it was. The house was searched very soon after the crime. If the gem wasn't found then, then it means Grail hid it somewhere. Somewhere the Knights of the Inquisition would not have looked. Where could it be? Witness has made a valid argument. How will the defense respond? Ha. Huh. The Knights who searched Sir Belduke's premises weren't looking for a magic gem. That's why there was a certain place they didn't consider searching. Interesting. You don't give up easily, do you? No. In that case, perhaps you could tell us all where the magic gem is. Can go whole hog for it, Grail's possession. Huh. Sir Belduke's premises were thoroughly searched. I don't think anything would have been missed there. You anticipated that, and that's why you hid it in a blind spot that you knew wouldn't occur to the knights. A blind spot, you say? Well, where is it? It's somewhere on Jean Grail's person. Yep. Oh, what? It's on the witness? Don't tell me the witness, the witness has it in that pocket. I mean, probably. I'm just guessing, aren't you? You can just say anything you like. By the way, I'm afraid there are no pockets in my clothing. So you are a girl! <laughs> no, <laughs> This is the second time I've seen Grey Earl today. Get it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and both times, I had a feeling that something wasn't quite right. Maybe it's just me. But it could be related to the whereabouts of the magic gem. Defense, show us the location of the magic gem. How do you think this witness hid the magic gem on the day of the crime? Um, well, I mean, this is um, pretty much want right to go right there. There, yeah. Right there, right in that. Look at that goofy ass <laughs> face. Putting it right there, Chiefy. Got it. Witness? We met for the first time at Sir Belduke's premises. Yep. At that time, you had an amethyst attached to your collar. Oh, that's right. Mr. Gray always wears that gemstone. I can also believe that the amethyst emits positive energy. Amethysts are purple. But when I saw you in the waiting room this morning, The gemstone you were wearing was green, not purple. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Me either. And now it's just gone. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing now. So my question now is, where is it gone? Where is that amethyst that you supposedly always wear? Objection. Wait, wait just a minute. The witness wears a purple gemstone. There's something amiss, Inquisitor Barnum. Yeah, <laughs> he gets it. When we arrived at the crime scene, the witness came out to meet us. Wearing a red gemstone. <laughs> I recall the witness wearing a gemstone. But that gemstone was green. What? He wore a green one again earlier and then purple front. Green? Amethyst aren't green. Although amateurs sometimes mistake. Perhaps you're light for amethyst, but that's irrelevant now. Yeah, check the green corner. Do we have any? Judge, what, what do you do in your free time? Uh, what's the green Collect one? Collect crystals. Oh, well, green. the green oh. one is that one. And the purple that we wore when we went there, that's the familiar. So when we met him, he was wearing the familiar stone. But then, at the time of the crime, you mean and earlier today, yeah. But uh, at earlier today, 
And then at the time of the crime where, uh, why did I forget his name? Barnum saw him. He was wearing the green one, uh -huh. which is kind of the important one. Weird. Does that huh. mean he just doesn't even use a scepter? He just uses a necklace? Probably. And just has the gems? Yeah. That would free up your hands. Yeah. Anyways. Witness. You've been trying to pin the blame on the defendant. All these magic items. In order to do that, you replace the Goldor magic gem with a regular gemstone. It's not the witch who killed Sir Bell Duke had used the spell of Amalia. You knew that if a witch's scepter with the family and gold draw magic gems attached were discovered at the crime scene, the suspect would be accused of committing both crimes. That's precisely what happened. The girl captured at the crime scene was accused of slaying both Sir Bell Duke and Sir Leighton. That was your plan. You removed the Godor magic stone from the scepter and inserted your amethyst in its place. And then, you attached the Godor gem to your collar. Yeah. That's why when we saw you shortly after the incident, you were wearing a green gemstone. To think, it was in fact a magic gem. <laughs> Poor Luke, every time I see him. <laughs> I wish you could see what's going on. I'm on this side now, but I can't <laughs> see anything. <laughs> It's in the it's in it's in the voice acting territory. Yeah. And this amounts to nothing more than conjecture. I do not believe you have any solid proof. However. Yes. I have to concede that you have surmised a logical connection between me and the missing magic gem. Fuck you mean? I am prepared to answer your questions. Huh? <laughs> Good. I will repeat what I asked you previously. Witness, state your name, profession, and finally, your gender. My name is Jean Grail. I have been serving the late Master Bell Duke. As you can see, I wear a butler's outfit. But the truth is, as the defense claims, I am a girl. Well, hey. there it is. <laughs> Ooh. Fancy. A girl. Unbelievable. <laughs> what? <laughs> the butler is a girl? Plot twist. Burn the way! She's adorable. <laughs> yes. Uh, order! Order! Order in the court! Dean Grail, are you declaring to this court that you are in fact female? You can now take the voice if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I have to make it not a spell as though. Just do whatever you want. It doesn't it doesn't have to be anything it's just too mean. serious over the top. Yes. <laughs> but everyone in town was under the impression that you are a boy. Was I wrong? <laughs> uh, did you hear that? The butler's a girl. Doesn't that make him or her a maid? I knew there was something suspicious about him. I mean her. Hmm. You know why, right? Think about it. All that alchemy. That's mighty suspicious. Just listen to them. Listen to the wild gossip and accusations. Alchemists pursue knowledge of the rules that govern nature. But to the townspeople, alchemy is no different to magic. Had they known I was a girl, they would have taken me for a witch. That's what Master Belgic was worried about. He told me it'd be safer to pretend to be a boy. In other words, you disclose that you're a female, but deny that you're a witch. I would have thought that was obvious. She knew that once her gender came into question, she wouldn't have been able to conceal it. Yep. That's why she's made this public now. It was the most rational choice for her. Inquisitor Barnum, may I ask you one question? Has all the evidence in this golden gentleman case already been presented? What do you ask? As it stands, you do not have a single piece of evidence proving that I'm a witch. Given the lack of pertinent evidence against me, 
I would like to be permitted to return to my duties. Every single time we corner someone, it's like, you know what? I'm going to walk away real yep, quick. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Kira did this. Yes, same fucking thing. <laughs> mm, what say you, Inquisitor Bottom? Please remember what Kira tried to do. It's been proven that the two gems were swapped. Well, that may also have been possible for the accused to have done so. Oh my god. How? When? Maya had no reason to swap the gems. It was a place of judgment. There's no need for us to understand the reasons behind a criminal's actions. Huh? <laughs> but it has to be logical. <laughs> for all those whom we judge are the otherworldly creatures. No witches. Oh my god. It's impossible for a human being to understand the reasoning of a witch. Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> He's <laughs> losing Luke his mind. Is going out. Is there nothing we can do? At this rate, Maya will be... Barnum still thinks Maya's a Maya's witch. Maya's going to die in a fire! <laughs> Shut the fuck up! We made it this far, and yet it feels like we're back at stage one. It seems there are no more rational arguments against me. Now, if you will kindly excuse me... Hold it! I don't have much on Grail when it comes to the professor's case. Or should I just let her go? Uh... <laughs> Wait and see what happens. I'm going to assume ask about... Because from the way that was worded, it's... Talking about probably trying to refer to the old case. A classic Phoenix way. You yeah. have nothing on you right now, but let's go let's go back in the past. There's nothing else I can follow up on regarding the professor's case. So what can I do? There's only one other option. Miss Grey Earl, I have to ask you to remain as a at the witness stand. Is there something else you wish to ask me? Your testimony is not over yet. There's still something you need to tell us about. Mr. Wright, I'm afraid I cannot help you. I've told you all that I could about this incident. Yeah, this one. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. And I'm afraid you've got the wrong idea, Miss Grey Earl. Excuse me. Your Honor, what this witness needs to testify about is not the professor's unfortunate incident but rather the incident from three months ago, namely Sir Belduke's death. It feels like it should be years ago, but it's only months. <laughs> yeah. If she was present the building at the time, working as a live-in butler, she needs to testify about the events of that day. About Sir Belduke's death? What the fuck are you getting at? <laughs> the fact that one of the magic gems was swapped leads me to a single conclusion. Both crimes, the murder of Sir Belduke and the transmutation of the professor, or the work of the same witch. The truth behind the alchemist's death may also hold the answer to this case. Mm, what is your opinion on this, Inquisitor Barnum? You're not fucking us, go for it. <laughs> I'll allow you to have your way this time, Sir Blue Knight. The Inquisition has no objections. Inquisitor Zacharias Barnum. Seems you've lost that unyielding attitude so admired by the townspeople. Here you are now, letting a novice defender lead you by the nose. It is hard to believe you have been known as the unwavering sword of justice, for your usually cool-headed judgment. You're barking up the wrong tree right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know little about me, witness. Do you think I care about defending my name? It is this town that I wish to defend. Well, that yeah, was take worth, that. That was worth <laughs> a shot. Sir <laughs> <laughs> Belduke's murder is the only case to have remained unsolved for so long. Jean Grail, you shall now testify about it. He wants to know the truth, too. <laughs> yeah. Compared to, you know... <clears throat> uh, uh, Von Karma, who, like, he, he all he cared about was winning. <laughs> yeah. Good to know that, uh, that, uh, Barnum's on the, the truth side of yes. justice. As demanded by both the defense and inquisition, the witness will testify about Sir Barrow Duke's death. Any questions? No, my lord. I must, however, mention one more thing before we begin. It cannot be proven that Jean Grey is a witch, as claimed by the defense. The court will irrevocably consider my FA to be the witch responsible for both crimes. Oh, come on! <laughs> Is that understood? Man. 
fuck, what other option do I got? So do she burns as a witch now or burns as a witch later if I fuck it up? <laughs> you have no choice, Sir Blue Knight. If you don't want the trial to end right now, ready your sword and face the challenge that awaits. But he doesn't have a sword! <laughs> but the opponent is a real witch. Think about the puts Maya's life at stake. Nick. <laughs> oh. Nick. Hello? But Maya! is gonna outwit you in court you're an ace attorney after all hey thanks so let's do it if i don't motivate you now i'll die <laughs> <laughs> then if it's accepts the conditions let's proceed with the trial <laughs> oh fuck you may begin we shall start with a brief summary of the incident about three months ago, in the dead of night, Sir Beldu. Goodness, the alchemist was murdered. Excuse me. The crime took place in his study, just as with this incident. The room had been locked from the inside. He was found still seated in the chair at his desk, so we can assume he was attacked while working. There are very clear strangulation marks visible on his neck. Jeez. Oh! There's something trickling down from his mouth. I saw that too. Is that blood? That would be unusual. Yeah. But it was. Yes, most huh. likely. He probably bit his tongue as he was struggling oh, with his assailant. That would make sense. Yeah. Then. You said earlier that some white powder was spilled all over the floor, correct? Yes, yeah, since we expect to find the killer's footprints. However, there were none. The killer must have somehow approached the victim without stepping on the floor. After murdering Whoa. Sir Belduke, the killer oh, left the room without opening the door. <laughs> you okay there? <laughs> Undoubtedly, the crime <laughs> must have been committed. It was the use of witchcraft. But I was discovered the following morning by the butler, Miss Grey Earl. Body was found by Grey Earl, huh? Convenient. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Barnum. A court illustrator sketches will be added to the evidence. All right. Perfect. The green was still behind the painting I noticed in one uh, of the pictures, so... Wow, gosh! Now, witness, begin your testimony. Tell us about the events spanning the night of the crime, from the evening beforehand until you discover the body. And I All mean right. everything! Let's hear it. Well, I killed him. <laughs> at around one o'clock at night, I accused my... Accused. Ah, <laughs> a little bit of Freudian slip there, huh? <laughs> it's rubbing off. <laughs> Excused myself and left Master Belduke in his study. When I called for him for breakfast in the morning, he did not respond. The door to his study was locked. A neighbor had come for a visit just then, so we forced the door open together. All the potions and other concoctions from the study have been confiscated. I wonder if they're being properly stored. Way to change the subject. <laughs> Potions and concoctions were confiscated. The victim was an alchemist after all. We were hoping the items confiscated from a study could prove some clues. So such things not must not fall into the wrong hands. It might not be standard practice, but it's deemed necessary. The confiscated goods are stored in our secret vault. The only person with access to them is the High Inquisitor, Lady Darklaw. It has caused me great difficulty, as I have not been able to put Master's research materials in order as a result. The confiscated items shall be returned as soon as Sir Belduke's murder is resolved. Today, apparently. I shall be looking forward to that. Oh, I bet you are. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> if I get found guilty, I won't get the things back. <laughs> Defense, you may begin the interrogation. Don't worry, found guilty, you won't need anything back, because you're just going down in that fire pit. And I can't wait to watch. Nick! <laughs> what? What the fuck? I don't know. Mr. Wright! <laughs> Listen. That's not very gentlemanly of you. Well, I'm not a gentleman, all right? <gasps> I'm leaving. <laughs> no. <laughs> he leaves the defenses. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we can, uh... I'm not going to actually present anything. I want to see the, uh... Crime scene sketches. How many we've got. There's the first one. You can see the green behind the painting over there. Right. Right there. There's still traces of the green over there. And then over oh, here, uh -huh. you can see... Oh, uh, I keep yawn, yawns are sitting. You see the stuff coming off the side of his mouth. 
It looks like blood. It's also a bottle over here. Is that a gemstone up there? What? No. I mean, it kind of looks like one. Oh, right that! There. I yeah. couldn't tell because of the magnifying glass. Now I see it. Yeah, I was trying to magnify it, but I can't actually go that far. That looks like, like gold ore. The gold ore gem. Because remember, he had that freaking goat. The goat that was made entirely of gold. <laughs> yeah. Um. In the uh, and then in the old basement thing. We have this. No footprints. A hand and a belt or a trail from his coat. Not sure what that's all about. Huh. Hmm. We'll need these at some point, and we'll see if we need them next time. Oh boy! It's time to get to the bottom of this, all right, you little witch. Look, look at that sneaky little smile. Oh, I see. Just, just smiling daggers right into our souls. <laughs> I'm see through that. You ain't gonna get me. <laughs> <laughs>